And as we remember our Anzacs, it's an honour to be chatting with Major Duncan George of the Royal New Zealand Army Logistic Regiment. Duncan, did I get that right? Yes, you did. Yep. <laughs> thank you for joining us here on Good Living. How are you? Good, thank you. Now, let's talk a little bit first. Uh, we're going to talk about your, your family history with the Army, but let's talk about with you first about how, how you first got started in the Army, and I guess essentially why. Um, well, I was at high school. I just wanted to do something where um, I guess I was in the outdoors and um, something that was reasonably challenging and um, I'd seen all the things on television about it um, and I, I just wanted to give it a go and so I went to university for a year, mm -hmm. decided that wasn't for me and um, enlisted as an officer cadet in the New Zealand Army. And it's all happened from there? Yeah, yeah, it's been great and uh, it's been sort of 13 years nearly and um, I've enjoyed most of it, not all, but it's something I certainly uh, enjoy doing and want to keep can do it, continue doing it for a while yet. Yeah, so you see a long career ahead of you with the Army? Hopefully, yep. yep. Well, I hope to continue doing it for a few years yet and then decide what I'm going to do yeah, from once there. I get out. So uh, when you served in East Timor, was that your first international assignment? Uh, yes, it was. It was back in 2000. I served mm. um, for six months over um, on the 2nd Battalion with most of the other people that came from Burnham. Mm. Was that a big eye-opener for you and the guys? Yeah, certainly um, it was and it certainly brought it home to you, to us when we uh, had a guy, one of our soldiers obviously, Leonard Manning, was killed mm. and uh, that's coming up nearly 10 years now so mm. it, yeah, it certainly puts things in, into perspective. Did many people after that incident decide to um, leave the army or most of them continued on? No, I think most of them would have continued on. Um, there's a normal attrition rate after operations mm. like that where mm. people, have, I guess, have joined up and they've done what they joined to do and they get out, but um, a lot of people continued staying on. Mm, which is great. Yeah. So talk to me about what you did in the UK because you served um, some time as well with the British Army, didn't you, in Afghanistan? Yeah, I was lucky enough uh, in 2006 I, I went on a two-year secondment to the British Army um, and during that time I deployed to Afghanistan in 2006 mm. um, on what was called Operation Herrick and um, and yeah that was a if, if, if East Timor was an eye-opener then that was a much bigger eye-opener over there. So what point, kind of province were you in there? I was in Kabul mainly uh, around the capital in a, in a little place called Sarobi uh, just out to the east um, and that was my, my company I was in was tasked with uh, logistics supply and force protection of um, of one of the areas in just coming into Kabul. Mm. So was that experience with the British Army operations you know compared to them with New Zealand is it very similar? Oh certainly uh, many of the types of things we do are similar and our training is very similar and, and much of our culture is similar as mm -hmm. well um, but the British Army is certainly doing it on a much more operational scale than mm. us um, a, di a different political imperative um, from what we have uh, and certainly um, a lot more casualties mm. that they're taking them than what we are. That's the thing, I mean sadly too many lives have been lost on Afghanistan soil. Psychologically how do you and your your members deal with those kinds of you know things? Um, well I was lucky not to have anyone in my actual company killed um, but there were certainly people within uh, the British unit that I was mm. in that, that were killed, um, one in particular in Kabul from a roadside bomb. Uh, I guess most most of them are young men and I guess there's the it's not going to happen to me mentality and, and I think that's the mentality that you have to have mm. um, because uh, otherwise you, you know you wouldn't be able to continue doing what you do and, and I guess the majority of the time when you're there you're certainly not thinking about that. You, that's right because you're there to do the job. Yeah, you're there to do the job. And do you get good ongoing support afterwards when you finish your time in places like that? Yeah, I was actually, it was one thing I was really impressed about the New Zealand Army compared to the British Army. Um, we put all of our people through a good psychological debrief after operations um, and from the British point of view when I was there um, they didn't they didn't do that quite to the same extent. Perhaps it's just a numbers game. Mm. They've got so many more people to do, but mm. um, we certainly get great support here in New Zealand. Wonderful. Now there's a very strong uh, connection with your family uh, and serving with the Army, which we'll be talking about now too, because you've got some great stories. Yeah. Shall we start with your great-grandfather? Yeah, my great-grandfather. There's a photo over there of him, I believe. Um, and um, his name was David Muir, 
and he was from Wellington, I think. I've never met my great grandfather. He died a long time before I was born. But he was a uh, staff sergeant in the Royal New Zealand Artillery who fought uh, on the Western Front. And he was awarded, um, mentioned in dispatches, which is a reasonably common gallantry award if there is such a thing. Um, and he apparently rode a, as, as my dad told me, rode a motorbike across the German lines in, in front of them uh, to deliver a message to his commander. And he was awarded the certificate here, which um, we didn't really have framed or anything for a long time. But I think, I believe it's got the signature of Winston Churchill down the bottom right hand corner, who apparently yes. was the Secretary of State for War. And, and King George as well. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if it's King George, it may have King George on it, but it's certainly got um, Field Marshal Haig and, and Winston Churchill on it, yeah. So what an honour there. And now let's head a little bit closer now with your grandfather. Yep, my grandfather of uh, Ian George, or Sydney George, um, as they used to call him. Um, there's a photo of him here on the right hand side. He was from Dunedin um, and he served as a Lance Corporal in the New Zealand Army Service Corps mm -hmm. as a driver um, and he pretty much went from 1941 through Egypt all the way up through Italy oh my goodness. and finished the war and spent almost six years overseas which is certainly we go away for six months and we whinge about it mm. he went away for six years. It's just it's hard to fathom isn't it? Yeah. And let's have a look at the Christmas menu because that's an amazing piece of memorabilia as well. Yeah the Christmas menu from 1942 uh, in Egypt um, and inside the waiters here, it's a new, it's a tradition which we still carry on today. Where on Christmas, uh, the Christmas dinner, the officers and senior non-commissioned officers serve the soldiers. Right. Um, and they have a few beers, and uh, we serve them, and they uh, tell us what to do. Get a bit of get a bit of <laughs> get a bit of their own back on us. Fair enough too. Um, and so that tradition still continues. That still goes it's on, and inside it's got the what they had there for. Oh yes. For dinner. So you can see there the cold joints, the salad, yep. soup, poultry, vegetables. That's fantastic. And the then on the cake. back, a few signatures from uh, from his platoon, I would imagine. Mm. That's still there. God, it's very special, isn't it? And yeah. also just a, a quick photo as well, because on your mother's side, there's even even more tradition. Yeah, um, this is my grandmother who my mother was born in England, so my mother's side of the family are British, but that's my grandmother, Jean Turner, on the left, and my grandfather, Les, he's obviously passed away, but Jean, my grandmother's still alive, and she was one of the few uh, females that actually served in North Africa um, in the Women's Auxiliary Army, or the, or the ATS, as they called it. And that's their wedding photo? I believe this is one of their wedding photos. Yeah, they were married in, in Egypt, I think, in 1943. Fantastic. Well, Major Duncan George, thank you so much for coming in and chatting uh, uh, to us today. We really do appreciate hearing your story, and it's been fantastic uh, for you to be able to bring in some of the history behind it as well. So thank you very much. Well, thanks for having us, Chief.